stand before you and speak in the name of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Whenever I hear this story from the Gospel of John, I imagine Nicodemus sneaking around in the middle of the night, walking close alongside buildings on the street to keep in the shadows as he goes to meet with Jesus. You see, Nicodemus was a prominent Pharisee leader. He had a high profile in the community. People in Jerusalem knew who he was. He had a reputation to uphold. And he was curious about Jesus' teachings and wanted to know more. But he also wanted to protect his position amongst the Pharisees. Nicodemus didn't want anyone to see him going to see Jesus. It could mean trouble for him, unwanted questions coming his way. Nicodemus, therefore, wanted to keep his inquiries on the quiet. So off he sneaks through the darkness of night to meet with Jesus, the light of the world. Nicodemus is at a crossroads in his faith life. Being a Pharisee and a leader in that movement, Nicodemus' faith was immersed in the Torah, the commandments and laws of Judaism found in the Hebrew Bible, or the Old Testament as we know it. He knew God in the rituals and rules. That's where Nicodemus found meaning, where he encountered the divine in those tenets of his religion. They gave him peace and confidence in what God wanted of him. This was how Nicodemus related to God. He's religious, but not spiritual. Today in our society, over the past 30 years at least, we hear many people identify as spiritual but not religious, or SBNR for short. I'm sure you've met them, and you may even have them in your family. They are the opposite of Nicodemus. They claim some sense of the divine or a higher power in their lives and in the world, but religion does not interest them. In a course I took earlier this year with our Niagara School for Missional Learning, we learned about SBNRs, and I'm sure they all have different reasons for declaring themselves to be an SBNR. Without generalizing too much, some common characteristics of them are they are dissatisfied with contemporary culture. They hunger for spiritual significance and experience. They see religion as too rational and controlling. They seek spiritual transformation in nature. They seek integration, unity, and connection in their spirituality. They are interested in understanding the meaning of life. They value authenticity and truth. They are searching for understanding of their deep spiritual experience. They meditate on and contemplate a multifaceted divine consciousness without specifically calling it God. Without knowing it, they also draw deep on ancient Christian practices of meditative prayer and silence, waiting on God to speak, and perhaps speaking to God into that silence. When Jesus engages with Nicodemus on that dark night, he's ready for some deep conversation. Jesus often found faith grew and evolved in conversations with people. Jesus knew that faith deepens with relationship. And he's about to embark on a relationship with this Pharisee who comes to him that night. So Jesus is not bothered that Nicodemus shows up in the night to speak to him. Jesus is impressed with the openness of Nicodemus and is willing to begin a relationship with him. Nicodemus will learn that he is speaking with God in his conversations with Jesus. And Jesus takes Nicodemus' curiosity and builds on it. They, see, they ask each other questions, and Jesus challenges Nicodemus to not just seek faith in his religious practice, but also to seek more the spiritual side of faith. Nicodemus is pretty certain that Jesus is from God. All of the signs that Jesus is doing indicate God's presence. And this is why Nicodemus approaches Jesus in the first place, to acknowledge what he's heard about Jesus and to know more. Jesus, I'm sure, appreciates that confession. That would have taken a lot of courage for Nicodemus to do so. However, Jesus starts to talk to Nicodemus about how the spirit functions in faith. And this is where Nicodemus gets a little hung up. He doesn't understand what Jesus is talking about at first. He doesn't get this talk about the spirit. This is a new concept for him. Jesus gives him examples of the Spirit, that it blows where it chooses, nobody knows where it comes from or where it goes. 
The spirit just is. Nicodemus will not be able to control the spirit since it comes from God. It comes upon us in the waters of baptism and we are born anew, born from above, of water and the spirit. The spirit will dwell within him and guide and strengthen him. And the spirit will be a holy presence of God within him and in everyone he'll meet. The spirit is important to faith, understanding it and letting it lead us into experience of the divine that brings us closer to God. The spirit's indwelling will change how he understands himself and he understands others. The spirit will inspire him to have compassion for himself and everyone he encounters. The spirit will enable him to love and forgive. His religious faith will only be enriched by his growth in the spirit. Nicodemus has learned in this conversation with Jesus that he has not embraced the workings of the spirit in his religious observance. In a sense, his religion is stopping him from fully embracing faith, fully embracing a relationship with God. He knows the scriptures, he knows the laws, he's now met Jesus, but he's not really encountered the spirit of God and not even considered its value until Jesus pushes him to consider it. Within this passage, Nicodemus has encountered the three persons of the one God. His understanding of God will only become more expansive and embracing and loving now that he has been introduced to the Trinitarian God. God has become bigger for Nicodemus. God has broken out of the box Nicodemus had placed God in. And as we all know, God is bigger than any box we can try to contain God. Jesus has just busted open the box Nicodemus had locked himself in for years. Nicodemus begins to understand that he will be living in the spirit through his relationship with Jesus. All these ways of knowing God will increase his faith. In his meeting with Jesus, Nicodemus' faith will be solidified and the gift of eternal life only means things will get better after he dies. His relationship with God will continue after death. God's grace will be with him always, for God has come in the person of Jesus to save the world and not condemn it. Jesus loves Nicodemus and won't condemn him. We don't know all of Nicodemus' story after this late night meeting with Jesus. We do, however, know that Nicodemus appears in the Gospel of John twice more. In chapter seven, when some Pharisees want the temple police to arrest Jesus, Nicodemus advocates for Jesus to receive a fair hearing according to their laws. Later, when Jesus is crucified on the cross, Nicodemus accompanies Joseph of Arimathea, who is also a disciple of Jesus, to collect Jesus' body for burial. He brings the 100-pound mixture of myrrh and aloes for the Jewish burial rituals. Together, he and Joseph lay Jesus' body in the tomb and await the resurrection Jesus foretold. These stories later in John show us that Nicodemus' insight and experience of God does increase over time. His dialogue with Jesus caused him to further reflect on his faith and seek the truth. He concludes that God came to save him and God lives in him. By the end of Nicodemus's story, it is safe to say that he has become spiritual and religious, the result of his seeking faith and understanding. He has made the connections in the relationship of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God grant us all the curiosity of seeking and finding God in the Holy Trinity and expanding our relationship with the Godhead. It is a journey of faith we take every day together alongside God who invites us in the church to be both spiritual and religious. Amen. <laughs>